Hello students. Today we will discuss signal transduction in plants. Before starting with different signal transduction pathways in plants, first in this lecture, I just want to give you an overview of signal transduction in general. Signal transduction refers to all biochemical processes by cells that transmit extracellular signal originating from the environment into specific response. You know, plants are sessile organisms, uh, are not able to move. But plants must cope with adverse environmental conditions and stresses like extreme temperatures, drought, high soil salinity, oxidative stress, pathogen attack, and many more. To respond in an appropriate manner to these environmental uh, stimulus or stresses, plants possess signal transduction pathway. Right? Signal transduction pathways are complex network of interactions involving signal elements transmitting through uh, the plant cells. When the information is transferred from the site of perception to the site of response, this is called signal transduction. Now components involved in signal transduction. While building elegant, complicated and interconnected regulating network, a huge number of components are involved, both in animals as well as in plants, like receptors, secondary messengers, protein kinases, transcription factors, reactive oxygen species, and plant hormones that regulate or stimulate other components. Now, different type of receptors in plants and animals. Receptors, you know, are specialized sensor proteins located on the plasma membrane, uh, cytoplasm, endomembrane system, or in the nucleus, right? As I already told you when we were discussing uh, photoreceptors in plants. In animal receptors um, include intracellular receptors, cell surface receptors, G protein coupled receptors, oint channel receptors, tyrosine kinase linked receptors, while in plants, two component based hormone receptors, leucine rich repeat LRR based hormone receptors, ubiquitination based hormone receptors, F box proteins, abscisic acid, G protein coupled receptors, and photoreceptors, right? Signal transduction pathway involves three stages. First is reception, second is transduction, and third is response. In reception, right? In reception, chemical signal, just look at uh, this diagram. Here, environmental stimulus is there, right? It binds to cellular protein at the cell surface or inside the cell. Here, this is cell wall, cytoplasm, and this is plasma membrane, and this is receptor, right? Environmental stimulus. Now, in transduction, in second uh, stage, binding leads to change in the receptor that triggers a series of changes in various relay molecules, right? And in response, specific cellular activity is triggered, right? Now, cell communication in plants and animals. Cell communication in plants and animals, uh, here the molecules and mechanism used in the cell uh, communication would be different. But some degree of resemblance is expected. Uh, for example, nitric oxide and calcium ions are widely used for signaling in both plants as well as animals, right? Although the specific molecules used in cell communication in plants often differ from those used in animals. However, general strategies are uh, similar in both the cases. Like animals, plants make extensive use of cell surface receptors. Most cell surface receptors in animals are G-protein linked, while in plants, enzyme linked receptors are there, right? The enzyme linked receptors in animals is receptor tyrosine kinases, but this type of receptor is extremely rare in plants, right? Instead, plants seem to rely on a great diversity of 
trans membrane receptor serine threonine kinases right plants also synthesize a class of steroid called brachynosteroids brachynosteroids uh, signaling function is to promote cell expansion and cell division and also plays a role in etiolation and reproduction right various growth regulators uh, also called plant hormones like ethylene auxin cytokinin zebrulin abscisic acid help to coordinate uh, in plant development now mechanism of signal transduction signal transduction is initiated by sensing of signal by receptors right just look at this diagram these are external signaling factors uh, including light temperature biotic stresses abiotic stresses right these signals perceived by receptors right and um, as i already told you these receptors are located on plasma membrane maybe in the cytoplasm and membrane system or in the uh, nucleus right now in plants roots of signal perception uh, are of mainly three types apoplast uh, you know formed by interconnection of cell walls symplast cell to cell cytoplasmic continuum via plasmodes meter and plasma membrane their lipophilic signaling molecules like ethylene auxin can cross the plasma membrane uh, and is perceived in the cytoplasm or nucleus to evoke a response right cells can only respond to a particular extracellular message if they express receptors that specifically recognize and bind that messenger molecule the molecule that binds to receptor is called ligands right ligand is a chemical messenger released uh, by one cell to signal either itself or a different cell right in most cases the extracellular messenger molecule binds to a receptor at the outer surface of the responding cell in plants receptor like protein consists of a large extracytoplasmic domain which activates site of a protein kinase involves a signal transduction process right now just look at this diagram here signal perceived by receptors and these receptors uh, as i already told you may be present on the plasma membrane uh, in most of the cases but sometime in the cytoplasm also endomembrane system also and in the nucleus right so when uh, these receptors receive signal receptor transmit this signal from its cytoplasmic domain to nearby enzyme which generate second messenger right now what is second messenger second messenger are intracellular diffusible small molecules and ions which are uh, rapidly synthesized or released transiently as a uh, concentrated pulse following signal perception by the receptor and modify the activity of target signaling uh, proteins right now depending on its chemical structure a second messenger may diffuse through cytosol or remain embedded in the lipid bilayer of a membrane binding of ligand leading to dimeration of the receptor and brings protein domains into very close proximity to the cytoplasm right so this receptor complex is then activated by phosphorylation right active rlk complex then interact with membrane bound or soluble transduction proteins to initiate a signal transduction in a different directions right after this process phosphorylation receptor complex is activated then gene expression is there right gene expression by transcription uh, by synthesis of messenger rna then translation and 
a plasma response is there and response is in the form of proteins right and then physiological or cellular responses uh, are there depending on the type of cell and masses response initiated by target protein may involve a change in gene expression means these are the types of responses and alteration of the activity of metabolic enzyme uh, reconfiguration of the cytoskeleton an increase or decrease in the cell mobility a change in ion permeability activation of dna synthesis or even the death of the cell right now termination termination of signal involves phosphatase 1 which remove phosphate group from the different enzymes right this overall process in which information carried from extracellular messenger molecules is translated into changes that occur inside a cell is referred to as signal transduction okay. thank you so much